Hello everybody, today is Saturday, Saturday the 20th of um, September and it was craft roulette night and I also had prepared a card for my mom because her birthday is on Monday but it works out uh, with the project congratulations card uh, color hummingbirds element best friends and random is add leaves and I did film it a bit differently because I thought it would be oh, I would find that interesting to see somebody in their craft room doing the things so I did the first part just from a bit further away but you see where I have to go and where I get my stuff and then the assembling of the card I filmed a bit closer and now I show you the what I'm gonna make and then the video starts. So at first I had to make a little space on my table and there I put aside the die cut I used for that. It is from Heffy Doodle. I don't know the name of it right now. And those are all the parts I had already prepared the week before. Uh, the, the background panel, the card base is blue, which I just put aside. And then I have three layers of grass and the interactive part. And now I had to get my Distress Oxides which are um, in this uh, IKEA shelf. Then short uh, pause to choose the colors. I chose two blues and two greens, a uh, salvaged patina and mermaid lagoon, lucky clover and pine needle. And this is my storage folder for all the foam, blending foams. I have them in, in normal Mepli. I don't know the name for that. Their stuff fell to the ground and I felt like it's not my day today. Uh, in that drawer I have the blending stumps, also the, my mini distress inks. Then here I got my storage for the stencils. I'm looking for the cloudy stencils. And so I have everything ready to do my first ink blending. So I start with my grassy borders and um, I never knew that I did that so quickly. It looks even when I don't speed it up, this is all at sec um, twice the speed. It's very quick without speeding it up too. And maybe that's why my hand hurts then. So they are getting better, but I still noticed that I did that today. Um, so I do those three borders just from the bottom part up. Um, it is already colored cardstock, so I didn't have to do that much. And um, yeah, third one. Again with Lucky Clover, which is my favorite green, and then Pine Needles, just to have a little um, contrast in there. Okay, then I'm finished with that. Now I'm looking for a sponge and some water, which I have in a, in a spritz thingy, a spritz bottle, and clean it off a bit, because I don't want to contaminate my next part, which I do with blue, with green. <laughs> and here I think about how this um, panel will get pulled out and where I would need my stencil uh, and which colors I use. I realized normally I don't do clouds with two colors, but now I had them out. I just used them both and I went way too, too strong for clouds, but it's fine. So I just did a little small rim of the darker color next to the edge of the stencil. And this is the front panel. And it will have a window that pops up and um, then the blue is com completely gone because I put a lawn there. So it doesn't have to be that good. And this is the panel that pulls out behind. So I want to have the same color, especially where it shows through, through that um, pull tap tap, pull tap notch. Uh, so I, yeah, but I'm coloring the whole thing, strongly colored. First, I thought I could do a stamp on it or something but I did not do that in the end I just left it I thought it's for my mom and maybe it's too much otherwise so there I see I need the notch piece a bit darker and now it fits back there and now again cleaning it up um, the spritz bottle doesn't work that well also the stencil around and maybe also on the other side because it's very annoying when you have a white piece of paper use your stencil and then it's uh, just splotchy and dirty if I can, I try to clean up. Now I'm looking for my um, speckles, my sprinkle colors. Those are 
Wow. What are those? No, they're not wow. They're perfect pearls. And I have them in those tiny, they were honey jars. And I use them and then I just let them dry in there and put, add some water. And then um, they reactivate. And here I get my brushes. They're there in this um, caddy. And now I put the lawn out and this might be a bit long. Maybe I should cut that a bit. But then you see how long it takes to do everything. I do three different kinds of um, speckles on the grass. And then I do the same for the sky. But I will cut it up a bit. Yeah, well, that was much. But here I go into the kitchen to wash my brushes. Maybe I should have cut that. <laughs> Yeah, but there I'm already back. So it's twice the speed and I'm not long gone. Um, First, I wanted to edit it a bit. And now I just started with a voiceover. And until I cut it, um, it already, go already goes on. <laughs> so it might be a bit annoying though to see and listen to that. Uh, here again, same thing for the sky. And then I re realized I don't have the right color. I tried to look for one. And um, I think I find another blue and then I realize I want a turquoise. So I need to make a fresh batch and I have that back there in the drawer, but I have rearranged my stuff. So I did look in the wrong drawer at first, but here I have my perfect pearl powder. It's in a little tin thingy. And I just use my brush to scoop out a little bit. And then again, I add some water and with my spritzer that doesn't work so well. And then I go on with my speckles. So I think I do two more colors and then I have to go wash my brushes again. And then I clean up a bit. I need to clean up as I go because I am actually quite a chaotic person who can organize and stuff, but it goes very quickly and it's very disorganized. And I can't stand that at the moment. Then I had to go wash my hands again because they got <laughs> dirty from the little uh, glass things here cleaning the table a bit um, because yeah I'm a bit dirty and chaotic so <laughs> I need to do those things and and I can't stand it when I'm too closed in I need my now space. I'm getting ready to do some embossing so I have my stamps there I already have a plan how I want to do it this is my stamping helper back there I got the anti-static powder there I got the Versamark ink pad there's where I store my embossing powders I'm looking for black and clear and I also got the ink pad on the left, put it all on the table and then I don't know, <laughs> I'm just watching it too to see what I'm doing. I guess I, I'll look for something. I needed a paper. <laughs> My paper to, uh, to catch the embossing powder is so dirty. I threw it out and now I needed a new spare paper, which is super easy, but I had to go over there to the old paper bin basket and get a paper <laughs> yeah well it took a long time okay here i got my paper i'm a bit pissed off <laughs> because there was a lot of effort to get that paper and again there i have the interactive part which i cut out first with the wrong color or i decided another color i'm glad i have it now so i can fold up the window and then see where my stamp has to go um, the stamp says Alles Liebe, um, a lot of love or something. And it is for my mom. When she opens that card, that would just show there. And I am going to stamp this with black ink and emboss it with clear embossing powder. That's why I don't use the anti-static powder here, because it should work without it. I'm not planning on coloring it, so it doesn't matter if the embossing powder goes somewhere else and it's clear, so you won't see it. So I stamped it about three times, so it's nice, juicy and wet. Then I put the embossing powder on it, put it right back in, close the thing because I don't want to have a mess. There is my heating tool, which did not want to go in the plug. And then I do the embossing over there. And my heating tool has a very stupid switch. So if I put it down the way it's supposed to go down, that's exactly where the switch is and it, it goes on to on by itself. So it switches on. That is a very bad manufacturing. Uh, I think they, they must have realized it after that. But that's why I unplug it right away. Also, I didn't know if I want to use it again. 
and now I go into the kitchen to wash my stamp. One could wash it with a cloth or I even have a stamper chamois from Lawn Fawn, but um, I like it very clean. So I often go into that kitchen and that takes quite a while. <laughs> it's even double speed. So I'm back and put the stamp back already back into the packaging. Sometimes I leave them out a bit so they can dry off completely uh, because I don't want, it, want them to get moldy or something. And then I thought I could emboss more. This is now on the card base on the inside. It's quite dark blue paper, so I'm going to emboss with white. I have another saying, Juhu, it's your birthday. <coughs> In German, it's uh, Juhu, es ist dein Geburtstag. And here I use the anti-static powder. And I, my thing, the brush on this thing is so hard and, and broken down. I don't use it, it scratches my paper, so I just tap on the back of it and then smear around with my hand. And because I use the white embossing powder, I want it not to stick to any other parts of the page because it would show. That's why I use it here. So I, I often mention that because it's something I think about. Okay, then here I have the white embossing powder and normally I never do that on the stamping tool. I put it on the paper first, then I put the uh, embossing powder on it. And I normally go twice and tap the paper a bit on the side. So my theory is that it goes onto all the edges of the wet Versamark ink pad ink. Yeah, well. <laughs> and now I have to plug it in again. And, um, and often when I unplug it, it's sure I will use it again. And if I would leave it, I wouldn't have had to use it again. So it just always works a bit opposite. It, also with my die cutting machine when I put it aside I will have to use it again and other and vice versa if I leave it out I don't need it anymore so that takes a while I always do that on ice eye level and I really am looking forward to a new heating tool at some point this is not the best I got that when I first started in 2020 uh, I got a cheaper version of everything and uh, yeah it's not the best here what am I doing I'm cleaning up a bit this is the water bottle I put aside I think I am done with most of the pre preparation work. So everything back to its place, into the drawer. Again, into the kitchen, I have Versamark on my ink, um, on my stamp. So that will take a bit longer to clean that. And here I am coming back, <laughs> putting aside the, the stamping tool, putting back my stamp and putting it back in the sleeve then if I find it or just on top uh, in the sleeve. And onto the pile of used stamps. Then what else? Um, getting rid of the extra anti-static powder. Putting the stencils aside. Getting out my ink blending foam holder. And put back the stumps there. So And, and I thought maybe you find that interesting. Because I, that's, I said that before exactly the same way. But I would find that interesting. And I wanted to have both wanted to have a wide shot and the close-up but I, I cannot do that I'm not good enough for that and putting the ink ink oxides back to thingy so after a nap I realized I didn't add leaves yet so I decided to use a stencil on the background layer and I use those Versafine Claire ink pads because I have uh, those brushes which are dedicated to each of the colors and I have a lawn fawn stencil. And the good thing about those colors is they don't really wash off that stencil, which I normally don't like. But here I can kind of use the same colors again and I don't have to decide which color where. It's kind of a um, fall autumn stencil. So you see there I already used orange and red on that one. So I can orient myself on that a bit. And you see those marks on my right arm. Is <laughs> I really just got up from that nap. And I thought I need to finish my card. Here I line it up. So it's a cool stencil. But um, I've used it before. And when I have writing on it too. It's it's too busy to see the, the, the words. So it doesn't show up that well later on. And now it's in the card. It's too late. I just saw that here again on the footage. And I would have to do that differently or have a background behind the writing and then the stencil. So that's not so good.
So here are all my parts. This is a background that shows up when you have this here. And when you pull this, this will fold open. I haven't folded that yet. This shows up and this stands like this. It's gonna be one of those cards. This is on the inside. So I'm gonna glue that on here. And to decorate, I have those layers. And those are critters I wanna use and uh, some mushrooms. They're from SF Forever Stamps, Stamps Forever Stamps or something. Very cute. Little foxes. Okay, now I try to assemble them. So first I start with uh, making those fold lines very crisp. It's always good to have that very crisp so the mechanism will, will work very effortlessly. And then I put it back down and turn it around and prepare that um, tab which will have the adhesive on it with <laughs> score tape. And then I will take the slider panel i will align it on top there and then just hope that it's straight which it won't be <laughs> okay then i pull off the release paper and push it down and there there's a millimeter on the right bottom part which is not flush with the upper part and therefore it doesn't go under the paper well that's why i decided to take those two millimeter high um, foam strips so that the panel is a bit risen and then when it slides up and down it should be able to go under the front panel with that little tiny millimeter that stands out and that worked out fine so and there's a hair caught in the glue um, and i like those foam strips they're very handy and about the size of those cards which are a2 the American side, see there, there's the thing that overlaps it and that's why there's a little gap thingy. Then I take off the release paper. I will also add some glue so I have um, a little wiggle room uh, when I put it on the card. When you don't do that, it just sticks where it sticks. There, I <laughs> realized there's still release paper on it. And I just put it somewhere with the glue on it. Okay, then I align those cards. The card base and the card front panel test it and it works fine then i realize i cannot grip the the paper well there so i i always forget that part i need another notch on the back and nobody sees that so i can just cut it out straight um test it out again and so on close my glue it is super quick drying glue so i can't leave that open for a minute now here i need to pay attention because um, I don't want this slider panel to get caught in that grass and uh, the grass didn't, uh, you will see in the end I have a problem with that. And the other layers I planned to just get up and stand there and even hide the whole sky part. But that's why I can only glue it on the, on the panel that rises, not on the sides, otherwise you cannot pull that. That's why I glued it on when it was up. Then I quickly decide where to put my animals um, because I also want to have them a bit behind this grassy border. So I don't want to glue it all down. And I just glue it onto the other one. Try to yeah, attach it well. Then put the mushroom. Realize I didn't have to put glue on the top of the mushroom. But then I have to be a bit careful with that. Then there's the little foxy. And yeah, I did that very quickly. I tried to not have it to the edge of the grass, but see where my card ends because I'm going to cut off the overlapping part of the grass. Then the other fox, I wanted it to be out of the grass, so to stick out a bit. Because I think that's very funny that first it lies flat and then it goes up like that. Uh, and then there's the mushrooms. And the other mushroom, which I will get and uh, put around a bit. Yeah, then I thought that looked cute. 
And I have one more mushroom. And I really didn't think too much. I just did it very quickly. Now I test if, if it goes under the things. Under this other border. Uh, cut off the excess there. And the other side. Pay attention to not cut anything else. Because they got right to the end. And now here I also use the foam strip. So it is a bit higher. And I use it very close to the to the thing there. <laughs> Just that it, it's raised all the way through. I wanted it really higher. So that the other panel can slide under. And I will have the problem that even though my grass layers go under, the critters, especially the fox on the right there, gets caught in, in the in the grass. So I had to had to fix that. It's not the best fix, but it works out. Um, I used cello tape for that, but it, it shows in the end that I have cello tape on it. So I took off the release paper, put my grassy border on it. And now when I close it, it doesn't go further. I didn't know where it got stuck. It's on the right on the right there with a fox. I need to pause it. So then I try to glue that fox down more on the right hand side, but somehow it my hands didn't want to do it. I was just not in the mood for really fixing it like that. Couldn't get the glue down there. Uh, so I just cut off the other border a bit. I'm confused. I'm kind of editing and voiceovering at the same time. And then I cannot edit. So I need to stop this again. So here I got the cello tape out. And I just put one strip around the bottom. That's when the, where the grass hits this other panel and then it can just slide up and it's it's work it works after that. But you can see the cello tape, so I'm not that not that happy about it. Next time I would I don't know, do it differently. Not have the critters too low. Um yeah. It's when you put a layer there in front, you will have the problem a lot. Because it's not the first time I had that. There it works. So I put some glue on the back. And stick it down and then I am done. I will I see now that I need something else on it, so I will decorate it a bit later. Just there on the first grassy layer of something. I don't know what yet. And my mom's birthday is tomorrow. So I still got a little time and that, that won't be on the video, but I think it's there's enough on it. And yeah, later on I will have to bake a cake for my mom, <laughs> which I do um volunteer very likely like to do okay so here close up of the thingy i love it when it stands up that it just that it's yeah it's like the way it is <laughs> okay so and now i thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one